Hi everyone and welcome to summer camp from ITMO University. I'm Olga, second year master student from ITMO University and my topic today is encapsulation technologies. This presentation is structured as follows. Firstly, I will tell you about what is encapsulation technology. Next, application, core materials, capsule size and popular techniques. Nano or microencapsulation technology is a very innovative and emerging technology. These technologies are already well known in the fields of medicinal, pharmaceutical and cosmetic product development. Capsules in food science opened up a new focus on the delivery of functional ingredients with high activity. These functional ingredients provide additional benefit to the consumers by providing healthy enhancement of bodily functions. Let's determine what's the encapsulation. It may be defined as a process to entrap one substance within another. The encapsulated substance except active agent, usually called the core. The substance that is encapsulating is often called the coating, membrane, shell, capsule or matrix. Encapsulation is a useful tool to improve delivery of bioactive molecules, antioxidants, minerals, vitamins, phytosterols, lutein, fatty acids, lycopene and living cells like probiotics into foods. In most cases, encapsulation refers to a technology in which the bioactive components are completely enveloped, covered and protected by a physical barrier without any protrusion of the bio bioactive components. Also, encapsulation has been defined as a technology of packaging solids, liquids or gaseous materials in small capsules that release their contents at controlled rates over prolonged periods and under specific conditions. The whole food process should be designed in order to meet the safety requirements of governmental agencies such as the European Food Safety Authority or Food and Drug Administration in the USA. The most important criteria for selection of encapsulation material are functionality that encapsulate should provide to the final product, potential restrictions for the coating material, concentration of encapsulates, type of release, stability requirements and cost constraints. Materials used for design of protective shell of encapsulates must be food rate biodegradable and able to form a barrier between the internal phase and its surroundings. The majority of materials used for encapsulation in the food sector are biomolecules. Among all materials, the most widely used for encapsulation in food applications are polysaccharides. Starch and their derivatives are commonly used. Plant exudates and extracts are employed too. Subsequently, marine extracts such as carrageenans and aginate are also present in foods. Microbial and animal polysaccharides are also exploited. Apart from natural and modified polysaccharides, proteins and lipids are also appropriate for encapsulation. Among lipid materials suitable for food applications, there are fatty acid and fatty alcohols, waxes, glycerides and phospholipids. In addition to above, other materials are employed such as paraffin, shellac and inorganic materials. I guess you have already heard about micro and nano capsules. However, do you know the difference between them? Based on the capsule size, the name and the technology of the encapsulation are different. The capsules, which range from 3 to 8 100 micrometers in size are called microcapsules, and the technology is called microencapsulation technology. If the particle size ranges from 10 to 1000 nanometers, these are called nanospheres, 
and the technology involved to encapsulate the bioactive compounds within the nano size range is termed nano encapsulation technology. Let's now turn to the popular encapsulation techniques. On this slide, you can see a few of them. Today, I'd like to discuss only three. First, spray drying is one of the oldest and the most widely used encapsulation technique in the food industrial sector. It is flexible, continuous, but more important, an economical operation. It produces particles of good quality, which size is less than 40 micrometers. This feature is desired from the standpoint of sensorial and textural characteristics of final products. Also, spray dryers are widespread in the food industry. There are several disadvantages of this technique, such complexity of the equipment, non-uniform conditions in the drying chamber, and it is not always easy to control particle size. About 80-90% of encapsulates are spray-dried ones. Rest of them are mostly prepared by spray chilling, freeze drying, melt extrusion and melt injection. Extrusion methods consists of dropping droplets of an aqueous solution of polymer. Most often this is 0.6 to 3% sodium alginate and active into a gelin bath. In case of alginate gelin bath is calcium chloride solution. Uh, the dripping tool can be simply a pet, a vibrating nozzle, a spray nozzle, jet cutter, or atomizing disc. Another frequently used technique is emulsification. It is utilized in case of water-soluble food active agents, and there are two combinations of emulsions, water oil emulsions or oil water emulsions, and water oil water double emulsions. An oil and water emulsion can be dried by different drying methods, such as spray or freeze drying and thus to produce a powder. Such dried emulsions might be encapsulates or an instant formulation for numerous food products. I'll briefly, briefly summarize the main issues. Encapsulation provides an effective method to cover an active compound with a protective wall material and thus offers numerous advantages. Some of the main benefits are protection of various actives against evaporation, chemical reactions or migration in food, controlled delivery and preservation of stability of the bioactive compounds during processing and storage, prevention of undesirable interactions with other components in food products and masking unpleasant feelings during eating. Encapsulation is an important approach to meet all demands by delivering bioactive food components at the right time and right place. With advanced strategies for stabilization of food ingredients and development of new approaches, we will be able to improve nutritional properties and health benefits of food compounds. That is it. Thank you for listening and see you in the summer camp from ITMO University. Bye!